Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket from Rev TV. You'll get every game every Sunday afternoon from around the league. Plus, NFL Sunday Ticket gives you up to eight live games on one screen with Game Mix. You'll get that died and woke up in football heaven experience when you upgrade to NFL Sunday Ticket Deluxe, including Red Zone, the channel dedicated to every scoring play from every game. And if you add Rev TV HD to NFL Sunday Ticket Deluxe, you'll be able to win big weekly prizes with NFL Wildcard Mania. Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket. The FNM deputy says the prime minister is clueless on crime. Four people arrested in connection with Latori Mackey's murder. Remmer Bell speaks out on the LOI controversy. Angry gaming board employees protest. Plus, a BEC deal could be announced this week. We've got those stories and a whole lot more coming up tonight. I'm Vonnie Toot and MB12 starts now. Topping news tonight, Deputy Leader of the Free National Movement Loretta Butler-Turner asserted today that Prime Minister Perry Christie is in over his head and clueless on crime. She was responding to Christie who admitted yesterday that his government will have to go back to the drawing board with its plan to fight crime. Butler-Turner insisted these drastic times call for drastic measures. He's in over his head. Um, I think they've been back to the drawing board uh, at least two times since they've come to office. They were ushered into office on the promises that they had the answer to crime. Despite the Christie administration's promise to smuggle crime, Butler Turner says the government appears to be clueless on how to stop the carnage. Five people were killed on the streets of New Providence during a 36-hour period, including Prime Minister Christie's press secretary. There were 73 murders recorded during this period last year, compared to the 82 murders recorded for 2014 so far. That's an increase of 12%. This government is clueless when it comes to having the answers to crime. They're more about show, showboating, and talking. There is no real action plan with regards to crime, and they need to stop playing the crime card. All of a sudden, it is no longer politicized. The reality is crime has never been a political issue. They used it as a political football, and here we are today, Bahamians, um, living in fear for our lives because of the amount of crime. This past weekend, five deaths in just over 24 hours is unacceptable. The Prime Minister admitted yesterday that his government has a lot of work to do to reduce crime in the country. He noted that officials would meet to determine whether their crime-fighting strategies are working and to examine new strategies. However, Butler Turner says, what about the crime plan the Christie administration unveiled late last year? That included placing police officers on 12-hour work shifts, increasing saturation patrols in crime hotspots, establishing a gang unit, and expanding CCTV coverage. I'm flabbergasted to know that the Prime Minister is now saying they're going back to the drawing board. I don't know what new plan they're going to come up with. The opposition has offered to sit with the governing party to see if we as Bahamians cannot come together as a united force to demonstrate that we cannot take any more of this crime. Asked what recommendations she would make to the government, the FNM deputy said, I think that drastic times call for drastic measures. They have two uh, ministers of national security, one of whom, uh, the junior minister, uh, the former police officer, Keith Bell, derailed the entire FNM administration on its poor performance with crime. And to this day, I can tell you the only thing that I have seen is that the crime is escalating in this country. Butler Turner questioned the logic in forming the controversial National Intelligence Agency if government is still grappling with solutions. What intelligence are they garnering if they're talking about protecting our people, protecting our borders? I don't see any of this panning out in terms of what the government is doing. I see lots of money being spent. I see urban renewal resources being used um, for every manner of thing besides crime-fighting initiatives. And at the end of the day, we have nothing to show 
but higher crime statistics. Meantime, police have arrested four men in connection with the murder of the Prime Minister's press secretary. 37-year-old Latori Mackey, who was the deputy director of Bahamas Information Services, was shot in the neck on Monday morning on Market Street. His body was found slumped over the wheel of his government-issued vehicle. Between 1.30 and 3.20 this afternoon, officers of the Drug Enforcement Unit arrested a 24-year-old man from Palmetto Avenue, 22-year-old man of Young Clothes, a 20-year-old man from Bimini Avenue, and an 18-year-old man from Young Clothes. Police say they have also arrested suspects in connection with last week's murder of George Nixon on Camp Road and the murder of Charles Davis on Sunday. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works, Renward Wells, says he is waiting to learn his fate following the completion of an investigation into the controversial letter of intent that he signed with Stellar Two Waste Energy last month without cabinet approval. Deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis said last week the Ministry of Works investigation is complete and the results have been sent to the office of the Prime Minister. I have said before that I won't comment on it until the Prime Minister comments on it. Uh, further, and um, I understand the Deputy Prime Minister says that his, his investigation is complete, and so I will wait for the results. Davis said last week that he expects Prime Minister Christie to deal with the matter after government has dealt with several pieces of legislation. The LOI was for a $600 million waste to energy plant at the New Providence landfill. Christie asked Wells to resign, but that didn't happen. Employees at the gaming board are demanding that government make outstanding lump sum payments. Workers protested outside the gaming board's Collins Avenue's headquarters today. Simone Davis has that story. More than two dozen employees demonstrated today in front of the gaming board that they are demanding back pay from 2010 and 2013 that remain unpaid. My, my co-workers and I, we've been so patient with the government, you know, they could have paid this money a long time ago. It's just that certain persons were it, intentionally keeping monies from the staff. The only thing we're asking for them to do is just pay us what is owed to us. We've already worked for this money, you know. This is high performance money. This is ridiculous. The thing is, we're, we're, we're not asking for any handouts, you know. We're just asking for monies that is owed to us. We have, we've already worked very hard. We are tired. Surrounded by dozens of disgruntled members, President of the Bahamas Public Service Union, John Pinder, called a press conference this morning to demand that government address several issues impacting those workers from outstanding increments to hazardous working conditions. Pinder says approximately 150 public service employees have not yet been paid increments in 2010 and 2013. He noted that the shift in payment methods described in the 2010 industrial agreement is the root cause of this problem. In our industrial agreement in 2010, we had agreed to a high performance evaluation system, which was implemented to some extent. Uh, some persons did receive um, some benefits from it, but a number of supervisors were challenged by the instrument in which they had to use to evaluate. Uh, the staff and so as a result of that we end up reverting back to the regular increment system in 2011. Pinder said when the Progressive Liberal Party took office in 2012, the government made payments to some of the employees, which was equivalent to the increments they lost in 2010, but they have yet to receive payments for 2013. Thirdly, as, re as relates to the 2013, increment that they have earned. Apparently the process in the evaluations was slow. Uh, I think they finally completed the evaluations now, but persons still have not yet received their 2013 increments, and so we ask them to make good on that. Pinder says employees are owed between $600 and $900. Another concern for the union is that some employees are working in hazardous conditions as the gaming board building is under renovation. Pinder said two employees have been injured on the job and have yet to be compensated. He also said some gaming board employees are still working without confirmation of permanent employment. According to our industrial agreement and the Employment Act, after six months these persons have, should have been off probation and established. And to date, they have very past 13 months and persons still have not received any letter of confirmation or they don't know their fate. 
And that's the concern that they have. And um, the union is asking the gaming board to please quickly um, execute those persons' confirmation letters so that they could begin to uh, have that particular stress removed from them. NB12 contacted Director of Labor Robert Farkasen, who is out of the country. He confirmed that no payment distributions have been filed up to the day he left, which was Friday. He said as soon as it is filed, employees would be paid. Farkasen said when he returns, he plans to meet with Pinder to discuss the concerns of these employees and ensure that all matters are dealt with. Reporting for NB12, I'm Simone Davis. Each year, the Drug Enforcement Unit seizes more than $20 million worth of illegal drugs. The latest bust occurred on Monday, with officers confiscating more than a half a million dollars worth of marijuana. Jasmine Brown reports. DEU officials revealing new trends in drug trafficking, insisting that the majority of drugs now coming into the Bahamas originates in Jamaica and Haiti. Officers from the Drug Enforcement Unit says their latest marijuana bust occurred early yesterday morning after intelligence led police agents to mount a joint operation in Williamstown, Exuma around 2.15 a.m. DEU and local officers conducted a search of an unoccupied house located along the shoreline and uncovered a number of crocus bags, each containing large amounts of marijuana. The final total is said to be about 511 pounds, with an estimated street value of $511,000. Three suspects, ages 37, 34 and 27, were subsequently taken into custody and have been flown to New Providence for questioning. While police are still investigating where and how the drugs came into the country, head of DEU Superintendent Samuel Butler says police are noticing new supply routes for the illegal drugs. According to Butler, they are a vast change from the trends of the 1980s and 1990s, when drugs were solely supplied by South American dealers. Superintendent Butler says drop-offs near coastlines in the middle of the night are now being replaced by large shipments by boat. Observe the various changes in, in, in trends. Uh, when we had direct flights coming directly out of South America, uh, that has fallen off quite a bit. Today we are now uh, more facing trafficking uh, from more within the Caribbean, uh, specifically areas from our intelligence uh, coming out of Jamaica, coming out of Haiti. Uh, we have seen today that many of our uh, own Bahamian citizens are now partnering with uh, the various trafficking groups in, uh, in the Caribbean zone, uh, going up with uh, GoFast vessels. The DEU chief says gone are the days when local drug dealers teamed up with South American cartels to import their drugs. He says Bahamian drug dealers are now hooking up with their Caribbean counterparts like Jamaica and Haiti, which supply the majority of marijuana and cocaine to the Bahamas. Marijuana coming out of uh, the Jamaica zone uh, and then we have seen large quantity of cocaine coming out of the Haiti zone. And so basically, uh, uh, mirroring our uh, yesterday today, uh, that is somewhat the difference that we're seeing. Uh. He says another worrying trend is that of drugs being hidden in shipment containers that are being smuggled in and out of Grand Bahama in particular. We're seeing, uh, particularly in a large volume of our cocaine being seized from the Freeport, specifically the Freeport Container Port. And they're basically, obviously that's a, a, a central uh, transshipment point, and they're coming uh, from worldwide. Uh, but most of our containers that we have actually uh, had opportunity to make uh, interdiction with, we recognize they were coming again out of the South America, and many moving on to North America. According to Butler, more than $23 million worth of marijuana and cocaine have been confiscated so far this year. He says 10,000 pounds of marijuana worth an estimated $10 million has been confiscated. Butler adds that 900 pounds of cocaine has been confiscated since January of this year. The estimated cost of cocaine is $13 million. Butler says the unit will continue to stay on top of changing trends to ensure future success. Established with the mandate to police the entire Commonwealth of the Bahamas uh, from uh, 
drug trafficking uh, traversing in and through the Bahamas. Uh, 26 years later, we're still in the fight. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown.